Hey guys, this is Down Phoenix, and I wanted to bring my thoughts about the whole Game Awards 2019. What I thought about everything that happened at the show as far as the awards ceremony itself, the announcements, and so on. So let's get into it. I know that the news cycle is already done and over with. Most people don't care anymore. This is just for the fans that watch my channel. Not really fans, I guess, so much as viewers, because that's kind of pretentious to say that, right? But anyways, let's talk about it. First of all, it was a disappointment. It really was. But it is the Game Awards. Are you surprised? It is what it is. It has, for the most part, gotten better over the years. Although I feel that last year's show was better than this year's show was in terms of both the announcements and just the way they did things in general. But one thing that I did not expect to see, which I think really caught a lot of people off guard, was the announcement of the Xbox Series X, the new next generation Xbox system, which is technically just called Xbox and Series X is just referring to this specific Xbox, whatever. You know, Microsoft's really stupid with the names. But I really like the console design. I think it's nice and simplistic and sleek. And it'll do the job, you know. A lot of people think it's huge and gigantic, but looking into the actual spec sheet of it, doesn't seem like it's going to be that much bigger than, like, a normal Xbox One X or a PS4 Pro. It'd be, obviously, uh, thicker, you know, but it's not going to have as much depth either. You know, it's a lot more narrow, which kind of makes sense because entertainment cabinets and... Things like that have evolved, and a lot of people are mounting their TVs to the walls now, and they don't want huge cabinets and things like that kind of bulking things up. They want a system that they can put on, like, a small shelf that they can mount. Hell, the system's probably even mountable. It wouldn't surprise me if it has, like, some kind of mounting ability, you know, to where you could just mount it to the wall or something like that. That would kind of make sense, honestly. But, looked really cool. Uh, they showed off Hellblade 2, the teaser trailer, which probably wasn't actual gameplay, I'm sure, but they claimed it was all in-engine, which is, of course, misleading, because when they say it's in-engine, it could literally still be a pre-rendered cutscene that's just running in that engine, so don't put too much stock in those statements. But it looked fantastic, of course. Hellblade was the 2017 game of the year for me. It beat out Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, which... It was just a mind-blowing game for me, obviously. You know, it was... It really made you think. It really did. You know, it was a very interesting game. It had a lot of cool designs. I know some people brush it off as a walking simulator, but it's definitely a lot more than a traditional walking simulator because you actually had combat. You had puzzles. You weren't just walking around looking at things, you know. <laughs> you actually had things you could do in the game, which was really cool. And the atmosphere and everything like that is fantastic. So I'm really looking forward to Hellblade 2. Senua Saga looks awesome. Definitely a game I'm looking forward to. I imagine that's either going to be a launch game or within the first year of the launch, I'm sure. So, then we, of course we had Godfall, the first PlayStation 5 game announced. Which, we didn't see PlayStation 5 or anything like that. But we did see the first game officially confirmed for it, which is this Godfall game which is a looter slasher game published by Gearbox Publishing, which, if you know me, that means that the game's already off the books for me. I'm not going to even touch it unless I can get it used or in some fashion where Gearbox doesn't get money because I have a very vested interest in ensuring that Randy Pitchford gets what he really deserves for various things that he's done in the past. But I don't want to get into that. So, but that was announced. It was another pre-rendered cutscene kind of thing. You know, it wasn't really any gameplay. Not a surprise. You know, because they just kind of wanted to get those quick little announcements out before they make their official unveils next year. Uh, then we had some other games, of course, that did get announced. Like No More Heroes 3. That looked pretty interesting, of course. Um, we had some new DLC for... Marvel vs. Capcom, or not Marvel vs. Capcom, uh, what's the game called? <laughs> Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3, my bad. Um, you know, we had all kinds of stuff like that going on, but really those were like the big announcements as far as games. There wasn't anything that made you really step, step back and like, whoa, I did not expect that. There was nothing like that, honestly. And it was kind of disappointing. I mean, there was Bravely Default 2 that looks pretty good, of course. 
So I guess I would be kind of discounting that. So that looked interesting as well. But as far as like most everything else, I didn't really care about it. And then the actual award show itself was just a disappointment. Like it's supposed to be an award show. We're supposed to be celebrating the successes and triumphs of gaming through the year. And for some reason, outside of like six or maybe seven awards, we just don't really offer any kind of thing about that at all. For example, Best RPG, which RPGs are really popular. They didn't even show it on the show. It was a pre-show, like before they even started the pre-show thing where they just announced it there, just shooting it off real quick. They just kind of blended in whenever they announced a word for Disc Elysium. And it's like, it also won Best RPG, you know. But, like, seriously? Come on. You know, I think we would like to know that kind of stuff. And then, of course, a lot of other games didn't get announcements. They didn't announce what the, big, the best action-adventure game was on the show either, for that matter. It's very disappointing. Very disappointing, of course. Um... Death Stranding, of course, there's a lot of controversy about that one. I know it won three awards, but one of them was Best Performance for Mads Mikkelsen, uh, which they was one of the ones that they just kind of rushed through. You figure somebody that's going to be a uh, character in a video game that does a really good job with that, and people are really excited to see what they have you know, to say on stage. Nope, you're not going to see what they've got to say. And then, of course, they won Best Game Direction, which is kind of a bullcrap award, if you ask me. It's almost like Best... Second uh, second Best Game of the Year, because this game never gets that award. So, Death Stranding got that one, so it didn't get Game of the Year. Um, but the actual Game of the Year winner, I kind of would almost prefer Death Stranding to win it, honestly. Uh, but we'll get into that in a little bit. And then it also won for Best Soundtrack, which is really stupid, because... Most of the music in that game isn't even original stuff. It's music from other artists and things like that. So that's kind of an insult to all the really good music we've had in certain games. Like Fire Emblem Three Houses, for example, which didn't even get it nominated. But that's another story entirely. And all this eSports crap, of course, was really stupid. It wasn't as bad as it was last year. Like, they did dial it down a bit. But there's still too much. And... There's not enough representation of the actual industry. How about awards like Best Game Studio, Best Game Director, um, you know, that kind of stuff. Like, we need to celebrate the achievements of the actual people in the industry more. We need to have, like, Lifetime Achievement Awards for people like Shigeru Miyamoto and Sid Meier and people like that, you know. People that have been in the gaming industry for a long-ass time and deserve that recognition. But alas it would eat into the advertisement time, right? And, I mean, that's pretty much what this show is. It's just a giant advertisement. It's a three and a half hour shindig where you're going to get approximately two to two and a half hours worth of advertisement. So, the rest of it's actual content. Now, and that don't mean traditional advertisements. We're not talking about, like, Budweiser ads or any of this kind of crap, you know. We're talking about whenever they show trailers for games and they show announcements and things like that. Those are technically considered advertisements. So it's almost like the Super Bowl to some people in that it's something that people watch for the advertisements, which is kind of ridiculous, right? But I digress. Uh, at least those advertisements, like with the Super Bowl, it's kind of like entertainment. You know, it's you get something out of it. Whereas with a video game trailer, you don't really get anything out of it unless you have some kind of personal investment in that trailer. Like, say, for example, if it's a sequel to a game you're really looking forward to, or something of that nature. But otherwise, it doesn't really have the same kind of attachment on that front. It's just it's just a trailer. You know, it's just like watching a movie trailer, essentially. But um, let's get to that game of the year. Um, because we had uh, Death Stranding, of course, Resident Evil 2, uh, Control... Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, Sekiro, and then we also had The Outer Worlds. Now, I knew that The Outer Worlds was not going to win it. I knew that that was right off the table. I figured that was just that fringe, just appease the 
you know, RPG players for kind of screwing them over with that one, right? Uh, so that didn't get it, obviously. Control, I knew, wasn't going to get it either. You know, it seemed like everybody kind of forgot about that game. And I was actually a little surprised that it got the representation it did at the show. It did win Best Art Direction, which I'm sure some people would contest, but the art is really nice in that game, so it did kind of deserve it. Um, although I would have liked to see something else like Gris or Link's Awakening get it, but I digress. You know, because Art Direction is kind of an ambiguous award anyways. Uh, it doesn't really mean anything, but I digress. So, out of all those games... What are your top three games that you would have named that would have been the Game of the Year award? I guarantee you, none of you had the game that actually won as the Game of the Year in your top three. There's no way. It's not possible. Because the top three would have easily been Resident Evil 2, Death Stranding, and Smash Ultimate. So, what won it? It was Sekiro, of course. Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. And this kind of pisses me off because I am a huge fan of From Software games. But Sekiro is arguably their worst game they've made in a long time. It does a lot of things right in terms of the Souls formula and things like that. But it strips down the experience a lot. And it's basically a game that's made just for appeasing to the get good crowd of that game series. So it takes away the ability to level up and things like that like you could in Dark Souls. So if you had a hard time in Dark Souls, you could level up. You can uh, do co-op and things like that. It strips away all those elements. So it actually is less of a game than all the games they previously made. But it still won the award. To me, it feels like the Sekiro winning the award was kind of like when Leonardo DiCaprio won Best Actor for The Revenant. It's not to say that he was bad in that movie, but it wasn't remotely the movie that he deserved to win with. And same with FromSoft. FromSoft should have won Game of the Year with something like Bloodborne or Dark Souls or something like that. Sekiro was not the game that deserved it. Like I said, I think I would have preferred Death Stranding to win it. Because at least that game would did something different. It did something unique in the scope of things. So when you think of 2019, you'll think of games like... Death Stranding. You won't really think about Sekiro because that game could have technically been made in any year. You know, it's not doing anything unique or different in terms of the game industry. So, that was really disappointing as well. But, I mean, I'm glad that From Software got the recognition. This is just not the way I would have liked to see it happen. So, but I digress. I still need to get around to actually playing through the game. Um, obviously, Death Stranding. I'm Kind of mad, of course, that Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order got completely snubbed, didn't get a single nomination, which, what were these critics thinking? Honestly, guys, what were they thinking, right? Uh, play the game, and you'll, you'll agree, you know, it didn't make sense for it to get snubbed. But very disappointing awards show overall. I really don't think it's going to change, guys. I really don't. I think this is a formula that they're going with for the time being, and this is what they want to give to us. So, accept it or don't. You know, I'm a sucker, so I'm still going to watch it, but probably not going to like it. Down Phoenix out.